I'm Welcome to you. a new presentation of Dive and Travel. My name is Sander and today we are traveling to the Red Sea. We have Steve Reddle as our guest. Steve is owner and managing director of Fare O Dive Club and the proud owner of the Big Blue Liverboard. Hi Steve. Hi Sander. Nice to be here. Thanks for the invite. Nice to have you here. We're going to talk about uh, the new liverboard, uh, the liverboard Big Blue. We all have been waiting for a long time for, and finally it's ready and we can do the most beautiful itineraries in the Red Sea. Um, today we're going to talk about the boat itself, itineraries, the diving. Um, but to start, what's the story behind Big Blue? Um. It's been in the pipeline for many, many years. We've been out in the Red Sea for over 30 years. We've dived all around the Red Sea. We've been working on liverboards in all those times. Back in the late 80s, 90s, we started out searching for wrecks on Xanadu. And it's always been there that one day we'd have a liverboard. And then a few years ago, we decided, OK, this is the time. We're going to do it. And then we've had a year or so of building, followed by a year or so of pan pandemic and it's there and we're finally ready to rock and roll. Right, that's, that's good to hear. Can you tell me a little bit about the concept of the Big Blue Liverboard? Okay, we're well, using our vast experience of diving, particularly on liverboards. Um, we know what's important to us and we run all our businesses over here based on us as divers and knowing what we want. Um, and one of the first things you find on a liverboard is there's not enough space. So Big Blue is big. There's plenty, plenty space. For everybody for relaxing etc it's 38 meters long most boats of this size will be licensed for 40 people we take 24 so we want to make sure that people have a lot of space um, we don't need to go for jacuzzis color tvs in all the rooms no one spends time in the rooms you spend time diving eating relaxing socializing so we've cut out all the luxurious items and concentrate on giving you the best quality of space and functional yeah. facilities yeah the dive experience in general as the diver on the liverboard ones absolutely yeah. and again we, we operate the diving specifically on the basis of what we would like and i'll talk about that more as we go through the presentation yeah. sure um the red sea is famous for of course the beautiful diving and the different routes uh people can take at the different itineraries we can go up north to the wrecks we can go to Brothers or we can go even uh, south to the, to the nice reefs. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the different routes which are pay, uh, possible when doing a big blue liverboard trip? Um, let me share you some pictures and some yeah. screens and we'll take it from there. Blue Safari, um, say a nice big boat. We are fully aware of the routes that are available and we'll provide any route that anybody wants to do providing it's safe and viable within the time scan and where the boat is we can't go to the northern wrecks if we we're based down in master island the week before so logistically we'll go wherever people want to go what we find in liverboards generally is there's a possession you get 20 liverboards following each other around on a particular route all dive in the same places at the same time and let's start talking about what is a safari. The idea of a safari is to go away and dive by yourselves in locations that nobody else is diving. And that's what we're all about. This is um, the North and Tehran, as we would do it as a standard dive, one of the regular patterns. And that's one of the routes we actually took. And you'll see that we went up to Bluff Point, which is towards the north there. And then we go across at an angle to the physical. That would indicate to me straight away that was a rough day because we couldn't go straight across to the thistle wall. So it gives you an indication. Yeah. And every time we do a, a safari, these maps are available afterwards for people to take away and all the details of where they dive, et cetera, is there as well. Now that's pretty standard and most people are doing that. So what we'll do is we'll do it at different times. We'll arrive at places when we know the other boats will be there the next day or the day before. Um, the thistle wall obviously itself is difficult to actually achieve that. Um, so we just dive at different times. Everybody gets up at six o'clock, go diving. We have breakfast and dive when they've all got out and we have yeah. the boat themselves. It's just common sense. There's 24 hours in a day. You're doing three, maybe four dives. There's plenty of time. There's no rush. If you're diving at six in the morning and you're taking photographs, there's no light. Wait till the sun to come up. The light's better. But the reason that these people, the other safaris do that is 
because they've sold a specific itinerary. Yeah. They told you you're going to be doing this on this day, this on this day, and then they have to follow it because they've got a legal contract. When you come diving on our safaris, we'll say we're going to do these sites. Can't guarantee the order. It depends on what other boats are doing, what the weather's doing, but these are the sites we will do. And I'll take it a bit further now and show you, if you look up in the, the top of the picture, that's Tyrone. Yeah. Oh. And this is what we actually did at Tehran that particular time. We had wreck divers on board. So they wanted to do some wrecks. People probably don't even realize there are wrecks at Tehran. So in the very north, there's a wreck there, which is in very shallow water. It's about six, eight meters, most of the wreckage, but it's also a long drift dive, plenty of marine life to see as well. But it's a good wreck. Then yeah, norm there. Normally everybody dives at Jackson, Woodhouse, Gordon, and, and return to back to Ras Mohammed. But now you use the, the wreck where nobody is diving. Yeah. Absolutely. You can only tend to do that one late in the afternoon, but it's a shallow dive, so it's the last dive of the day. It's yeah. fine. Uh, because obviously the, the wind usually blows from the north straight onto that area. You also look over on the left hand side, you'll see there's another wreck that we did. That's, um, what shall I show? It's a supply vessel which is sitting on the side of the reef, down at around 30 meters it starts. But again, because we had some wreck divers on board, while the others went and dived around uh, Thomas, we took some others across to do the wreck diving. So we're very flexible. Yeah. We look, we'll listen to what you want to do and we're incorporating it into the dives. And that's fairly typical of a traditional standard route done our way. Yeah. This is a southern leg. We went out of Master Island, sometimes we do. It's not my favorite way of leaving, but it's a, an option. Um, and we come down the coast, do the reefs on the way down, and there's numerous reefs that nobody's diving. You've got them completely to yourselves. Uh, on this particular time, I think we went pretty much straight to Zabago, which is the part down in the, in the south, south there yep. to the right. And you'll see there's a lot of dives there. We did one, two, three, four dives on Zabago because that is my favorite dive site in the Red Sea. And I've dived there 30 years. So there's a pretty good chance it's good diving. Um, there's caverns, there's a wreck, there's a drop off, there's sharks. The reefs are immaculate, pristine, and there's no other boats. Everybody else sails past them, the gap goes to Rocky and then goes across to St. John's. We have people that actually ask to come and take their groups and spend four or five days in Zabago. So it's really good and people drive past, it's amazing. And then from there, we went across to St. John's, did a few dives in St. John's, sent back up the tire. Yeah. You can spend time in the tire and do the dolphins, but to me- Through the shoal reefs, yep. Yeah, in, through the shoals, and then further back up again to Master Island. Again, if people say they want to do specific dives, then we will make sure that these dives are included. Uh, otherwise, we go what the weather predicts, where we know that the life is good, where we know boats aren't going to be. It's all flexible rather than regimented. On that particular trip, because that was last November, no, November before last, uh, for my birthday, we didn't see another boat. Yeah. Not one boat. And, and then, show, then it shows that flexibility, listening to the guests, uh, gives them the, yeah, the optimal trip to the south. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there will be trips where we're a bit more specific because if we're running open trips and then there's 20 different individuals on board, obviously we can't be changing it too much. But if it's a club that's chartered it, yeah. the guys running the club can say, this is what we want to do. And that's what we will do. No problem. It's all yep. possible. Wrecks are one of the big things for us. Um, as I mentioned already, we started wreck diving back in late eighties. And these are the ones that people have probably already dived. This will go on. Um, the one on the top right is actually Ulysses, full of glass fish. You get there at the right time of year. Then that's the Carnatic, the bottom two. So they're the ones that everyone knows at Abernahas and Bluff Point. There's many, many more wrecks that people are not even aware of. Here we have the Turkia, which is one of our favorite and most requested wrecks. Far up in Zafrana, completely intact, same size as Thistlegorm, sitting upright. The boat itself, is in far better condition than Thistlegorm, um, but it doesn't have the cargo that the Thistlegorm has. But it's a wonderful wreck. Um, we'll spend the day there. 
And this is up north, eh? North north. This is, this is north north. This is up in the Gulf of Suez. Yeah. Near, near Zafrana. But it's not the only one up there. There's a few more that I can show you here. The Ubuti, the one on the left, um, the Scalaria, it's in the middle, and that's the Kutmos on the right side. That's one of the more recent ones. That was a uh, oil rig supply ship, sat at anchor for a long time, and the hull just rotted away and it sank. Yeah, there's loads of wrecks up there, and there's still many to be discovered, which we did. Yeah, and a lot of wrecks are not included in a normal north safari because they do the the famous wrecks about abu nuas dunraven thistogorm and that's it that's it and th these are much further north it's basically an overnight sail from the bluff point to start getting to these three and then further up again for zaprana there's another one the pride of al salam which is the p and o ferry or used to be a p and o ferry the free enterprise five that's a picture of it completely intact it's actually there. We found it, but we haven't dived it yet. Okay, it's not a particularly good picture because it was done off a little fishing boat. Because when we go looking for these things, we look for them uh, with the tools we have available. There was no safari boats around up there, so we used a fishing boat. We took a side scanner, and on the side scanner, you could see these four or five peaks. You think, well, I wonder what that is. When we dive down, we found out it's the lifeboat still attached to the main wreck. And the wreck is completely intact and never been dived. And the lifeboats are, yeah. The lifeboats are just hanging upwards. Never been dived because we don't have a club that actually wants to go and do it yet. Yeah. We put the offer out there that if someone wants to go and do it, it's going to be at least a 10 day trip. Um, we can go and dive the Free Enterprise of Five or the Pride of Al Salam as a virgin dive site. Beautiful. That's in 35 meters of water. So it's doable. It doesn't have to be a technical dive. We have other ones which are technical dives like the Domiat. But there's so many wrecks that people have never heard of and you'll get stories that don't exist. They exist, they're there, it's just off the beaten track. So I think the next question you're going to ask me about is the boat itself. Yeah. Well, I'll predict it. <laughs> <laughs> so the general specification, it's as I said earlier, it's a, it's a big boat, 38 meters by eight meters. Um, it was, it's not technically a new boat, although it is a new boat. It was a licensed craft, which we stripped down to the last, I think four meters of piece of wood, which was left. And then we had to rebuild it from there. So it's been built completely from scratch, yeah. absolutely from scratch, but just to maintain the uh, original licensing paperwork, etc., it was done such like for four decks. We take 24 guests because we tried to keep the numbers down. However, if you add up the cabins, and you'll see they're there, that's enough beds for 28 people. Yeah. We actually have a license for 40 people. Um, the reason being, we don't want to overcrowd. We don't see the point of taking a boat out to go diving on these remote sites and putting 40 people in the water. You want True. to put yep. as fewer people as you can. And when we do dive, we'll be diving groups of six, unless you want to dive in a bigger group. Six. Five minute break, six, five minute break. So you get to really enjoy the sights. Um, we have a nice big dining room. The pictures will come up shortly. Lounge areas, sun decks, dive deck. Um, two engines, obviously, generators, two generators. You can cruise at 12 knots, which is perfectly adequate. Good tanks, um, new compressors, all the things. Insulation unit, on. yeah. Yeah. And we are fully COVID certified. So by the CDWS MOT, we have inspections to allow us to actually show how we look after guests in the COVID times. And we've been certified that we are able to, to work in COVID times. It does limit our numbers. And instead of 24, we can only take 20 people at the moment. Yeah. Any more question from you? No, I see 30 dive stations. So that means that there is uh, enough room on the dive deck and everybody can sit in a good order. So perfect, yeah. Okay. There's some pictures then. This is Big Blue. Very sleek and simple, nothing spectacular. Looks impressive. This is the dive deck. 
say 30 stations so you've got your 24 divers and plenty of space for guides yeah. and if anyone wants to be doing a bit of technical diving there's a bit more space and some relaxing areas we said we've got 24 people how much seats can you see there yeah yeah <laughs> and if they sit in the sun deck everybody is scattered over the boat so there is not a crowded atmosphere yeah and again, upstairs again is the actual sun deck which is just a wide open space so yeah. there's so much space on board the dining room with free seating so you don't have got to be squeezing along and yep. tucking yourself in the cabins generally are, are twin cabins uh, independent air conditioning shower units um, wet floor obviously but probably toilets you can put paper in the toilets it's not all the marine toilets so nice and spacious we also have disabled yep. facilities and you'll see on the disabled facilities, the ramp entrances, sliding doors, not opening doors, and much better space between the beds. Yeah, enough so space the for the wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. So we work quite a lot with a UK charity, Depth Therapy, which is all about looking after um, service people that have been injured in the wars. And we obviously left, made sure we were able to cater for them on a liverboard. And yeah. The response is we have a lot of people now interested in disabled diving. We've got a Russian group coming in May and many other people have made inquiries. So, so we're always looking to improve the facilities, but that's where we're at at the moment. So that's big blue. Yeah, it shows that it, there is space enough. Routes can be discussed, of itineraries can be discussed with the divers who want to go on board. Uh, for 2021, Dive and Travel already fixed a number of routes uh, of itineraries uh, with Big Blue. Uh, we will mention them uh, on our website and uh, via the link below this video, people can check our website and see which itineraries we are offering in the months of June, October and November as a full charter trip to the Red Sea. And of course, all in, in all the other months, we have individual spaces available if people want to join uh, a scheduled trip, which is uh, also in the system. Um, Steve, if you do a liverboard trip, what's your favorite itinerary? I think I've already answered that one with Zabagat. Yeah. <laughs> That's Zabagat. Yes, absolutely. We have memory, fond memories of being down there. And why especially Sabargov? Why, why is this your favorite trip? Um, nobody else is there. <laughs> the actual area is just beautiful in terms of the soft quarrels, in terms of the, the drop-offs. Um, the wreck is there. Uh, we, have, we spent 20 minutes swimming along actually with um, DPVs with a pot of dolphins along there. We have fond memories of this. We've seen silkies, we've seen hammerheads, we've had white tips. So there's just so much there. You never know. You get up in the morning and it's different again. Yeah. Every dive day is a different day. Yeah. What's in, in for in the future with Big Blue? Do you have special trips in mind? Uh, I know how you guys work. So probably you already have an idea which you're going to work out in the coming years. Um, well, we've mentioned the part of our salam if we don't find a club that want to do it i'm sure in the near future we'll be going up there ourselves with a, a scheduled trip and get people on board to join up and see what other wrecks we can find yeah and there's plenty more to be found up there that's for sure yeah the red sea has a lot to offer and a lot still not discovered because a lot of organization are only fixating on on the, uh, the trips we all know and the dive sites we all know instead of visiting the areas which are less dived. Absolutely. Perfect. Steve, thanks for this beautiful presentation. Uh, next time we'll do the video uh, live on board the Big Blue. And for now, I want to thank you for your time. All the best and uh, safe trips with the Big Blue. Thanks very much.